and the, the melting of the air is basically leads to more frequent phases, negative phases of the Arctic oscillation. So they are related. The sea ice melting as well as the Arctic oscillations are related. So the melting of sea ice basically impact, makes the imbalance in the radiative budget over the region. And Dr. Sayles and I was talking about albedo changes. Albedo changes are there, so therefore there will be bad imbalance in the radiative budget. And also that impact, impact will be there in the atmosphere as well as the whole atmosphere uh, circulation. Next one. And if you really see what are the possible changes that are related to Arctic uh, teleconnections are, if you really uh, talk about global climate change, it can lead to changes in the storm tracks, jet stream, and for planetary waves. In the middle latitude, there is a large scale of planetary waves which are moving from west to east in the, uh, in the atmosphere and the uh, higher atmosphere level. And uh, because of global change, Arctic amplification takes place and that can lead to large sea ice changes. And that also can change in uh, storm tracks as well as jet streams and planetary waves. And if you really analyze the last few years of data, there's a clear cut evidence that the whole jet stream, the northern hemisphere, the jet stream comes down in the, in the winter and the pre monsoon season. And that has large implications over the, especially the region over Europe, Europe as well as the southern part of the Asia. Next one. Yeah, and if you really see the trends in the Europe uh, uh, extreme weather events only, the top is precipitation below is the warm events. You can see there's a large increase over the whole northern northern parts of Europe. And uh, the recent studies are really attributing some of this could be caused due to the Arctic sea ice melting as well as Arctic Excellent. And with the intervention, we have done uh, some analysis. If you really see the next one. And if you really see the relationship between the Arctic sea ice extent as well as Indian monsoon, there's a good correlation. However, oh, it's not very high as the relationship with the ENSO or LEDO. And it's almost about the 8 to 10 percentage of the monsoon variability is explained by this relationship. And if you, if you see the circle and there are some five years, if you remove those five years, the correlation will be still stronger. So there are some good relationship between sea ice extent and Indian monsoon. And uh, we have some explanations why it should sea ice extend. Uh, should variability in the CSX and should affect the Indian monsoon. Next one. And also, we have an asso association with Arctic oscillations with uh, Indian monsoon, which is not that strong as the uh, CSX relationship. Next one. Yeah, and uh, you can just skip this one. Yeah, and what what, we co uh, what could be the effects of declining CIs on the atmosphere, especially on uh, teleconnections? The next one. Will so the declining sea ice basically lead to a kind of a negative phase of uh, optic oscillation, which is shown in the sea level pressure as well as temperature, and also is the increase of the snow cover over the extreme and northwestern parts of Europe, which has an implication over the Indian Monsoon. Next one. And, uh, and another important thing, Arctic teleconnections enhance the frequency of blocking height. So called the blocking height in the middle latitudes has a large implication in terms of uh, I'll give an example of uh, later the 2010 Pakistan flights, which are triggered by the blocking phase in the atmosphere, which is seen at about 5 to 6 kilometer level. And that frequency is being increased due to the Arctic sea ice melting. Next one. And this you must be remembered in this year, 2015, March, there was a huge uh, rainfall activity, a lot of eight hail storms, and it happened in 14 also. And if, if everything goes well, it may happen in 2016 also. And this is going to happen. And uh, you can see the right hand side, they made wheat crop during this uh, three months from season, March. And you can see the rainfall, all blue lines are the rainfall where the rainfall was excess during that month. And uh, our analysis clearly shows that this could be linked uh, the teleconnections with optics the And uh, because what, is, uh, what we have seen is the whole jet stream has pushed down and associated with the stream, this weather event can happen. And also the north of the stream, there was a blocking time. And this kind of frequent um, uh, kind of setting, atmospheric setting is taking place last three, four years. So it could be related to uh, CAS melting. Next one. And this is the, the relation, you can see the right hand side, it is a beautiful blocking type over the northern parts of uh, Europe, and which could be, which could be the cause of uh, the large scale rate of <coughs> India. Next one. And the 2010 Pakistan floods, which you may be remembering, some of you may be remembering, it's a huge flash, thousands of people died. At the same time, Russia had a huge heat wave. It lasted about 15 days or so. There are so many people died. And the interestingly, next one. Interestingly, both the events were caused by the same weather system. It's the same weather system. For Russia, it was a heat wave. For Pakistan, it was a heavy flood. 
and this next one I can show. You can see the uh, you can see the left hand side top. You can see that it's a huge uh, anticyclone. Basically, we call it a walking guy. And over India, it's a top. So it's a basically a, a kind of a large planetary wave locked to that to the region, and which caused over the Russia, over the heat wave over Russia. The same time, the same kind of uh, weather system has affected Pakistan, and we've uh, Indian monsoon going on real well, and they had severe floods. So this also, uh, recent studies in paper says uh, that this could be also a signal from the Arctic uh, teleconnections. The heat waves over India, and uh, we know that in summer we had this year, May, June, we had severe severe heat wave, and other places many people are killed. And if you really analyze the heat wave frequency over India, it is increasing. Next one. You can see that let's, let, let's say the frequency of heat waves over central northern parts of India and the right hand side is the maximum duration. You can see average duration and maximum duration. You can see that there's a substantial increase in the maximum duration on the maximum duration as well as average duration of heat waves over India. And uh, our preliminary analysis says that this also has a, a signal, a kind of response from the Arctic Sea ice and Arctic. Yeah, if you really see the, um, uh, this is a paper taken from recent paper in Nature. If you really analyze the uh, uh, Arctic oscillation with the extreme heat wave, so you can, I just put an arrow, you can see that. Or Indian media have a red color. So that has a relationship between heat wave frequency over India. So as you may be seeing that it's too far, but why uh, Arctic climate should uh, change the variability should really affect the regional climate. But it's all connected through the Europe, uh, the middle latitude uh, trade uh, for uh, the planetary waves. Next one. It is in the story. So far, what we are, I was talking is how the regional climate, sorry, the Arctic climate variability can affect regional climate as well as Indian monsoon. And recent papers were not by one of our the scientists here, Professor T.M. Krishnamurthy. He is uh, T.M. Krishnamurthy. He is uh, one of the very leading scientists uh, in the U.S. Uh, and he is working in Florida State University. He has made a paper. He has made an analysis and saying that this Pakistan flood, which we, uh, we I mentioned just now. Uh, this kind of events really can trigger more melting in the Arctic Sea ice. It's just a reverse relationship between so that heat, the heavy rainfall events over here can really increase the latent heat uh, release, and that energy can propagate to the Arctic region through planetary waves over the. You can see that uh, this, uh, as we know, you can see there are waves going. Uh, anticyclone, cyclone, anticyclone, cyclone, the extends up to the Arctic region. So there is a hypothesis he is making that uh, the heavy rainfall events over northwest India as well as the Himalayan region can release a lot of latent heat over the atmosphere and which can be propagated or which can be attracted to uh, Arctic region, sea region and also can enhance the, the natural melting of the sea ice. So this is this is some of the gray areas where we can do a lot of research and just uh, explore. Yeah, so the concluding, uh, I, uh, I mentioned that observational studies uh, study says that there's a big relationship between uh, teleconnections between Arctic climate variability as well as the regional climate variability. Not only over region, the whole, especially over Europe, it has the extreme weather events are uh, caused by the relationship uh, the, the sea ice melting, the effect sea ice melting. And we need to understand, we need the observational programs as well as the modeling studies. And in IHM, we have started um, modeling using a system model. The first version of the system model is uh, been developed. So we plan to use this S system model to understand the variability of uh, Arctic sea ice uh, and as well as for, uh, the relation between regional as well as global climate. But I will tell you that the sea ice modeling in the modeling of sea ice in the model is very tricky issue and uh, very complicated. And there is a lot of work is to be done. And the best of the best climate model are not able to simulate the past observed sea ice variability over the Arctic region. Whatever we have seen, the large changes, if you really see the observed, so the model simulation, the model simulations are not able to reproduce it. So the model has still a lot of issues in reproducing just the past observed uh, sea ice variability. So the model need to improve. So we have we are doing a lot of work on that. As uh, Dr. Silas Naik was mentioning that we are also collaborating with the uh, NCOR as well as for other scientists in uh, Norway as well as in Japan and the Belmont Forum to understand the regional uh, climate relationship with the Arctic region. So I will conclude with that and I would say again I compliment this organization and uh, wish you all the best. Thank you.